Well, welcome to the field. We're back here with the rebuilt Chimera 7 looking to increase our range on walks now. A few really helpful comments from the last video about what people did. Um, so I've got a few things to drive. I want to do them systematically, so one thing at a time, so I know what makes the difference. So I've got the Menis RC Pico patches and the Thrashers on the goggles. And the first thing I'm going to do is repeat the flight to about 1K. Same as I did before, same power settings and bit rate on the goggles, just so we can get a comparison before I start changing other bits and pieces. So it's not as nice today. It's a bit windy and it's pretty cold on the fingers, but uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to survive 10 minutes of flying and uh, yeah, let's get going. Just before we get into the flying, a quick word from our sponsor, which is PCBWay. Now, PCBWay is well known as somewhere where you can prototype and get your PCB designs made up, either printing the the basic circuit board or the full assembly, also doing things like CNC machining and 3D printing. Did you also know it's a place for sharing electronics projects like these ones here? Look, here's one done using an ESP32 to make a drone, which features all the materials you will need, the circuit designs, and basically waste a bit of together. And that's what I wanted to mention today because PCBWay have a contest in collaboration with KiCad, which is an open source PCB design software. If you've done a PCB design or you're going to and you use KiCad, you can enter it in a PCB competition and win some prizes. There are different themes to the types of project that they have and there are awards like Raspberry Pi 5s and Picos and bits and pieces like that. There are the full rules and everything on the website and I'll put a link to that down below. But for now, back to the flying. Well, the very first flight turned out quite a lot shorter than expected. As I took off, I could hear a vibration like there was something going on with the props and I could just see a little bit of uh, shaking in the lens, like there was definitely something vibrating there which wasn't right. So I brought it back down to take a look. And I, I had a good look and I did a bit of a line of sight hover and everything seemed to look okay. I couldn't spot a problem, so I thought I'd carry on and I'd check the motors out uh, every flight and make sure nothing bad was happening. You can see me here just going back and forth trying to trying to figure out if that's the case. Uh, it was a bit weird, but um, something I'll fix at a later date. I'm thinking it's probably just a prop or something. But yeah, that was flight one. Me going along saying something's not right here and then putting it back down again. Okay, so let's do an actual flight. And what I'll do, I'll just speed over the bits where we're just sort of flying out to a distance because that's not a problem. So we'll pick it up at about one kilometre and go to real speed. And at this point, our signal's at three, which is not too different than what it was before. But what we're not getting is any focus mode coming in. We've still got a full bit rate of 50 megabits per second. Our latency looks pretty good. Uh, so I suppose the question is going to be what happens when we turn. As you see, as we start going to turn, our signal drops to about 2. We've got a bit of focus mode popping in on the sides. But mostly in the turn, it's popping up here now. And our signal is 2. You see our bit rates dropped a bit. But it's looking fairly good holding that signal at 2. This is a definite improvement of what it was before. So right now I'm thinking just swapping out those antennas was really worth it. Now in case you didn't see the original video, this is what it looked like on the original walk snail antennas. You see we got the signal going down as low as 2 just going out there. Focus mode is on already. Uh, our bit rate is dropping off on the way out, which we expect to be the strongest part. Uh, and when we turn around it, it gets worse essentially. So we've got signal 2 here, We've the signal goes to 1, signal 0 on the turn and then as we come around again signal is 2, 1. It basically drops as low as 0 there as you can see and we get pretty much focus mode all the way back. So you see how that's a, a massive improvement over the original. Well, that seemed to make quite a difference. Just on those antennas, especially going out there, I felt the signal was very good. When I turned around, we had this tiny antenna being blocked by the battery, which is kind of expected. But what I've just done now is another suggestion. I've changed the power output from 1200 milliwatts to 700 milliwatts. Many people suggested that the power output couldn't cope with 1200. The amplification just wasn't working and it would work against you. And I've dropped the bit rate from 50 to 25 to see what difference that makes. So we'll do the same thing again and see what happens. Same battery, just go again. 
Once again, let's speed things up to get to our range. I do realize I've made a bit of a schoolboy error here though by changing two things at once. I've changed both the power output and the milliwatts, but you know, we'll just have to go with it. Anyway, on the way out, it's hard to tell at first sight, but we've got the signal sort of sneaking between three and four. So I do think that's slightly better. The signal was kind of locked on about three before. Um, so that bit's good. The question is, is it going to be any better in the turn? Again, we're doing basically the distance to the, the end of this field before we hit the road, which is about 1.25 kilometers. I, I feel it's a fair test because we're doing the same on each. On the turn, we get that slight dip there into two as we turned. And then as we come back, our signal's staying on three. Previously, it's, it's just dropped two there but it's now recovered and that is that is better that is an improvement where previously we had a little bit more on two it's gone to two again it seems to be recovering to three slightly more it's not as much as a difference from changing those antennas out but this is still a marked improvement of what it was before on 50 megabits per second and using the 1200 milliwatts of power. So 700 milliwatts of power, seemingly better. Of course, because I changed two things at once, I don't know which is the most significant, but uh, it, it seems like a good move anyway. Anyway, I'm going to bring this down and we're going to try one more test. Was that better than the last one? That was a little bit harder to tell. It certainly looks a bit smeary on the grass. I'm going to have to compare the footage when I get back really and have a look so I'll show you that and see what we think but the main point is turning around and coming back obviously we're getting blockages from the frame and the great big battery which is like a sort of metal cased in there so another suggestion from the comments quite an obvious one really because you can do this is mount the battery on the underneath see if we've got a little less blockage coming back so yeah new battery let's give that a whirl the only problem I've got here is routing the cables because I don't obviously want them getting hit by the props. I can't figure out where the vibration is coming from. I might just need some new props. I've had a feel of the motors. Everything feels fine there. No changes since the tune of the last time. So I don't quite know what's going on there, but um, is it the wind coming in? Is it something? Don't know, but nothing seems to be bad with it, but I don't really like flying it when it's, when it's got an obvious vibration issue, but we'll try one more time. Okay, once again, let's speed our way out to the part of the field we want to look at. You will notice the sun's come out very slightly here. It's still pretty cold, but better. Anyway, we're off and our signal is currently four. I should explain that four is the best signal you get. And when you're actually in the goggles, you just get a little uh, sort of display with a graphic showing like four bars. When he, when he put it into the... OSD maker it basically turns it to a number so you see it's sort of flicking between three and four here and that is again an improvement even on the way out because previously this would be pretty much down at three before we put the battery underneath well, that doesn't quite make sense why as the antenna is not in a, a, a dodgy position on the way out there anyway it's dropped to three here we're doing the turn you see it go back up to four and staying at three and as we come back, this is the time where the antenna would be blocked by the battery in the frame. We are keeping the signal at three here all the way. There's no focus mode popping in at all. Our bit rate is good. And as we come further down the field, it pops back to four, which is the full rate. Uh, back to three again. Is it going to come back to four? Certainly does at some point. But that shows that this antenna is definitely being blocked by that battery mostly some part of the frame um, but a lot of the battery and it's not doing itself any favors by being so damn small anyway that is a, a good result i think well that really worked well it uh, completely got rid of the focus mode we were getting when turning around so that's good i think there's still things to do and i will be trying to do it and that is to extend the VTX antenna because that is just too tiny. I'm thinking one of the left-hand polarized uh, Rush FPV cherry, cherry antennas, something like that. Those tend to be my go-tos. But we'll do that for next time. I don't want to fly this anymore because I can still hear that vibration noise and it's not clear what it is. And although you know none of the motors are hot or anything, I don't I don't like flying stuff where I don't know what the problem is. So I'm going to go back and resolve that before we do any more testing on this one. And what I've done here is try and sync up those flights so you can see the turn and the difference. Because each one 
Each time he did something more, it was slightly better, but until you see the original versus our final thing, you don't really see how far it's come because each one is a slightly incrementally better thing, but it really has made quite a difference doing all those things. Okay, now we're talking, we're starting to improve things. As I said, this I think is still a pain. It's so small. It's You literally only have to be at a, just a little angle or have the battery there and it's everything is blocked. I don't know why these are so small. There's no option to get uh, longer antennas from walks now and given that the goggle antennas didn't seem to be that good I think that really deserves swapping out anyway so that's next time along with figure out what that vibration was and fix it but most of those things are very easy to do I'd say the most significant and easiest part was to get rid of the original walks down antennas out to something much more decent I got these ones from uh, Menace RC Greg sent them along to me very kindly for me to check them out ages ago sorry it's taken so long well worth it so if you've got the stock antennas on I think it's worth swapping out now this is the original goggles I haven't got the goggles X I don't know if there's any improvements there uh, and I think you have to do something with the faceplate to replace them but it seems like worth it because that was that was the biggest upgrade along with changing the bit rate changing the, the milliwatts of power more power isn't always best as it seems to not be able to cope with the 1200 milliwatts yeah but I felt I could go like a lot further I just happened to run out of field and much more happy about you know the range I'm dealing with there within the field which is about a kilometer which is a reasonable amount to fly in no big focus mode thing in the turns no sort of signal going to zero and the latency jumping up all good Anyway, I hope that video has been helpful and uh, helps you guys get a bit of better range from your walks now. And thanks to everybody who made all the comments about things I could try out. There are a few in there I hadn't really thought of and a, a couple of obvious ones that I just don't, oh, duh, why hadn't I done that before? So thanks very much to you guys. Anyway, hope that's been helpful. I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.